Today we are talking about a $14.5 million project taking aim at the opioid epidemic. The Alcohol and Drug Council of Tompkins County will be opening a brand new open access 40-bed supervised withdrawal stabilization program in Lansing, Tompkins County. It's important for a variety of reasons and to learn more about them. We are joined by ADC Executive Director Angela Sullivan. Angela, thanks so much for taking the time today. Before we get into the specifics of the facility, um, walk us through the problem, addiction and lack of local resources. Kind of set the stage of how we got here. Uh, So we got here uh, by the fact that there really weren't, close to Tompkins County, which is where we are, there really weren't, uh, when this conversation began, believe it or not, all the way back in 2015, there were not uh, enough inpatient facilities for people. And um, we could sort of see what was coming, right? So opioid use was increasing and uh, other substances were increasing and we did not have enough places for people to go. So in Tompkins County, there was no detox services for about 30 years. And that is absolutely a barrier for people to access care. So if they have to travel and leave their community, they, they're not as willing to do so. And thus began our journey of going from, you know, a 50 plus year old organization who has done primarily outpatient services and prevention services in community, uh, looking into developing an inpatient detox and stabilization program. Well, that must have taken a little bit of institutional <clears throat> know-how and just pure grit, especially over that period of time. I mean, we're, we're what, like eight years now since 2015 when that conversation started? What was that like? Uh, I have a very tenacious team and uh, we have a little bit of a uh, internal mantra of like, we're going to do it. Like we just, we're going to do it. Um, and it is so needed. Um, and what we've developed here was developed uh, in those eight years between trying to figure out how to do it, trying to figure out how to fund it, and what was really the best thing for our region. Uh, we spent a lot of time before we found a building, before we did any of that. Uh, we talked to all the community partners that represent the whole continuum of all the social determinants of health, right? So housing, employment, safety, faith communities, the the whole bit. And we talked to them and said basically three questions. What are you seeing as the need or what are you seeing? Uh, What can we build that would be helpful? And what do you want to do or what part of that do you want to play? And this, what makes this, in, in my opinion, really great and unique is that it is really a community-centered response to the addiction and substance use issues we're dealing with regionally. So from the very beginning, we knew we had to have space for our community partners who are also you know, addressing this issue, whether again, it's housing or employment or violence or other healthcare. Um, and, and we designed that into the whole program. Um, if Alcohol and Drug Council of Tompkins County staff are the only staff coming in and out of this building, we will have failed on our vision. So we really uh, want the space to be utilized. It's already, we're not even seeing patients at, and we already have meetings scheduled here. Uh, you know, different groups are coming through. We've done, gosh, probably by now 60 tours uh, with various organizations in the Finger Lakes region probably well over 300 people have walked through the building to sort of check out the design and why we think this is different and important. Uh, We designed it with a real keen sense of space and where we are, you know, putting it in place. So it very much reflects the Finger Lakes. We have photo murals of Finger Lakes vistas that were done by local photographers. Um, And it is decidedly less an institutional feeling than a lot of other places. So lots of light, windows, air, <laughs> all of those things. I, I think that that's a great segue too, because uh, give us sort of the four one one on on what this facility is. Obviously, it em- embodies something that feels a bit different than um, historically what people think of when they think of uh, treatment facilities like this. So walk us through what uh, all of this will entail in total. Sure. So 
uh, it has what is we call three levels of care, right? So there's a continuum of care, uh, you know, throughout the region and this particular space here in uh, Ithaca slash Village of Lansing um, will have three levels of care. Uh, the first is called open access, and that is a 24-7 walk-in outpatient clinic, essentially. Um, it's actually an enhanced outpatient clinic because we can do more medication-assisted treatment sort of on the spot, and we can do some physical health care. So again, somebody uh, decides at 2 a.m. on a Saturday morning that they are done doing what they've been doing or they want help, uh, they can come in and there will be a nurse and or a counselor um, and professionals here to help them and figure out what their next steps might be. Um, and again, this people can walk in at any time of day. So a parent or a friend could walk in and get a Narcan kit or fentanyl test strips to make sure that their friend isn't you know, using something they don't think they're using. Uh, they could get, you know, a family member could come in and get information. This is really sort of that front door to all the resources that all of us provide in the region. Uh, and that is stays less than 24 hours. So again, somebody could come in at 2 a.m. And it's great if we stabilize them by 4 a.m., but if there's no place for them to go until Monday morning um, at 9 a.m., we're able to work within those parameters and, and keep folks here, give them clean clothes, food, yeah. um, somebody keeping an eye on the medications, all those sorts of things. Then the second level of care is what's called medically supervised withdrawal, which is essentially uh, inpatient detox outside of a hospital. So uh, again, any substance, uh, you know, whatever they're trying to do with medication assisted treatment, we're basically looking at um, making sure withdrawal is as comfortable as possible and that they're receiving any medications that they would need. And those stays are generally three to five days, maybe a little longer, depending on the substance. Yeah. And the folks that would come to us are pretty much anybody who uh, doesn't need an IV, uh, we can't do IVs. So that's the hospital level treatment um, and, you know, sort of more complex cases. So um, if they can get here, we can treat them. Uh, and then the final level or the third level is what's called residential stabilization. And what's great about co-locating it with open access and detox is that people can go into stabilization and continue their, you know, skill building, their building on their health until the next thing is available. So uh, those stays two to three weeks, sometimes as long as 45 days, they can be here. And the whole intent between that design is that sort of the community wraps around the individual and works together until the next place or next step in their journey is available. Uh, so, and at any point in this, people can be, you know, discharged to other community partners. And the great thing is we have a community partner office and some training spaces and all that so that they can come in and do person to person connection instead of the usual handing somebody a business card or a number written on a piece of paper, right? That we can actually um, ease those transitions and help people become more comfortable um, accessing the services that they need and are here for them in the community. Now, a lot of folks are going to look at the number of beds and say, well, that's awesome, but it's also probably not enough. Um, how do you, uh, as somebody who's in the field, in this every day, how do you respond to that? And is this sort of a, a blueprint? Can this facility be a blueprint for for other facilities down the road? I hope so. I think I would also be remiss in not mentioning there are other organizations doing bits and parts of this right. um, or other services in the in other communities in the Finger Lakes. So, um, you know, they lots of needs are being already met by other providers. Uh, so that would be my first answer. And then I think my other answer is you do what you can with what you have where you are. And I think I'm quoting uh, um Churchill, maybe. <laughs> I think that's a Churchill Fair. quote. That is uh, uh, but you really like, we can only do what we can do. Right. The Again, the intent by having this open access, detox and stabilization paired together is that um, hopefully we can keep people moving on that continuum of care 
And uh, yeah, and we're going to be sending out notices to other referring partners saying we have beds open or hold on, we don't have a bed yet. <laughs> you know, those sorts right. of things. Um, in uh, Again, we've been working on this a long time and uh, you had a hard enough time finding a space this large with 40 beds. Uh, the um, it, Yeah, so the, the numbers are probably increasing, especially post COVID. And so we already had little conversations about, geez, are we going to need to expand the open access part? Are we going to need to, you know, do something differently? Um, but the intent is to keep people moving along that continuum and referring people back to their home communities once they've detoxed and stabilized. Um, we are not, you know, the catch all for everything. It's we just really want to be a really welcoming, non-stigmatizing front door to the continuum who's here for everybody. I have to imagine that the data says that the approach you guys are taking is far more effective, at least by the numbers, um, mm-hmm. than kind of the piecemeal approach that we do see. You know, you you mentioned doing what you can with what you have, totally understandable. Um, but the success rate, I would imagine, has to be better where the services are more interwoven and and there's that ne- extra layer, I guess, of of integration and communication between the agencies, right? Uh, we hope so. I mean, that's the whole design. It works in other systems yeah. uh, and in other areas, uh, this this idea. Um, but this is a fairly unique um, center. It has uh, a very intentional focus on the whole community being engaged. Uh, we've been, as I said earlier, doing lots of tours what makes me happiest in my job right now is hearing every group we bring through, whether it's from colleges and universities or community organizations or faith-based organizations or law enforcement or whoever, they all come into the space and can picture themselves doing something positive to help people here. And we've had people come through and be like, can I teach guitar? Can I set up a garden? You know, Can I teach them to paint? Uh, you know, th- those sorts of things. And so that to me is um, inspirational and unique. There's a lot of research about how people in general, whatever service they're accessing, um, do much better if they know there's a team behind them or a team with them going through the process as opposed to, again, sort of running through a system where it's like, I go here, then I go there, then I go to the next place. And then Mm -hmm. five places down the road, I'm exhausted and I have no transportation. (laughs) You know, it can get uh, exhausting. And so our hope is with all of these MOUs we're drafting and all of that, that um, people see that they are part of the community, that the community wants them to be healthy and succeed. So a great segue from that is uh, what opportunities are there for professionals, members of the community, um, anybody who's interested in helping, helping uh, with the mission in general, uh, how can folks get involved, uh, whether they're in Tompkins County or maybe around Tompkins County? Mm-hmm. What what kind of help are you guys looking for and, and what's the best way for the community to engage? So the best way for our community to say you want to help would be to go to our website, which is alcoholdrugcouncil.org. And we have an opportunities page. You can click on that. We also have a live chat that goes direct to our HR specialist. So if you have ideas or questions um, or interest, you can live chat with her. Her name is Alyssa. She is lovely and um, has been working on getting us all the new staff we need. We have 35-ish open positions at the moment, um, and they range from uh, administrative help to other like dining services help. Again, people are here 24-7, 365, yeah. so we it's like a full program. Um, the greatest need, which I'm sure is no surprise to anybody watching this or listening, uh, is uh, nursing. We need six nurses, RNs, before we can open the doors because we have to have RNs on every shift. Um, And so I would encourage anybody who has a passion for this work or this population is looking for set shifts um, and would love to help us start delivering the service. RNs are a huge need. We have other needs though, 
uh, sort of your classic counselor letters after the name, the LMSWs, LCSWs, licensed mental health counselors, all of that as well. So uh, we definitely have positions open and we're interviewing. I know um, I've had two interviewees getting a tour of the building earlier this morning. Um, and it it is, uh, yeah, it could be a really exciting way to build on a vision from the ground up. Um, every person we've already hired has said, I have this interesting, wonderful skill set or experience that I would love to bring forward to use. And that's, to me, the greatest thing is, right, people's whole self, right? Absolutely. And, uh, yep. Um, any important dates? I know you mentioned you can't actually open the doors until you've got six RNs on staff. So calling all yeah. RNs first and foremost. Yes. Um, but the other part of that is when can folks kind of expect um, you guys to be rolling down there? Uh, we, the plan now would be early May. Uh, again, we need our fully staffed and get everybody on board. Yeah. So that's uh, that's the barrier we face now. It's kind of amazing. We did all of this construction work and supplying during COVID and got everything ready to go. So this is our last uh, hitch, if you will, our last barrier to break through is to, to make sure we have enough nursing, qualified nursing. It's a little higher level of care, right? So we need more nursing, um, but that the hope would be early May. Absolutely. All right. Angela, thanks so much for your time. Uh, best of luck with everything uh, running towards that goal in the next 30 days. Thank you so much, John. I really appreciate the opportunity. And again, if we have a contact uh, link to at Alcohol Drug Council. So if you have any additional questions, um, I would also close just by saying, don't wait until May if you need help now. So if anybody listening here needs information or referral or treatment or medication assisted treatment, please seek out us or a local provider. Uh, it's really important. Uh, addiction treatment in particular has changed a great deal in the last few years. Uh, it's much more harm reduction focused. Uh, people can de decide what recovery looks like for themselves. And we're all here to support them in that. So please don't wait, get information, get help, talk to somebody. That'll do it for this edition of Finger Lakes today. If you'd like to see more conversations like this one, check out the show on your favorite podcast platform or subscribe to the FingerLakes1.com YouTube channel. Have a great day and we'll see you next time. Thank mm -hmm. you.